Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. Yeah, so today I'm in my car, guys. I hope you don't mind. I've just arrived somewhere a little bit early, and it has been a while since I put up a video. So first, well, not first, last, I want to share with you an anecdote, a very interesting anecdote about nitric oxide spray, which I talked about in a previous video. I'm going to try to link that video in a little while, but basically it's a nasal spray that's used as an antiviral, antibacterial, kind of a broad antimicrobial nasal spray. So um, I think Dr. Bean actually did a segment on his channel about the efficacy of some of these different nasal preparations, although he really focused more on provodone iodine, which I, I think I, I prefer not to because that has more limitations uh, and more issues that you have to kind of think about, whereas the nitric oxide seems more more broad and frankly more effective. So that's beyond the scope of this video because I did another video about it, but I have an interesting anecdote to share with you guys um, just shortly. But before that, I just wanted to explain, I've been uh, scarce for a while. I did put a note up on the Facebook group page. So let me give that a plug as usual for those of you who are new to my channel. If you like my content, you might want to head over to Facebook and Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy does have a Facebook page and also has a Facebook group. So I put a little message up in the group saying that, um, um, that had some good news and some bad news. So the good news is one of my kids got engaged recently and so there's a whole lot of activity and scurry around that and we're planning an engagement party and they're planning a wedding and um, so there's just been a whole lot of busy time. Um, unfortunately the bad news is that some very very dear friends of ours probably are, are just just very dear friends for over 20 I think 24 years or something like that. Uh, they lost their son <clears throat> and uh, we are, we're a family with two kids, they're a family with three kids, so our, my two kids and their first two kids are exactly the same ages, and then they went on to have a third one, and it was the baby that unfortunately passed away, and I, um, I have nothing to complain about, but um, I've just, I've been very busy, I tried to do everything I can to help help as did many people in the community here. I was very awed by the response of the community and I thought it was really a statement about this family, how many people in the community really turned up to uh, first of all just be there and second of all reached out, how can I help, how can I help, how can I help. And um, it's just been a very sobering experience to see somebody, see some people that we love go through that. Here I'm going to start to tear up. Um, and in the end of the day, there's nothing you can really do. Um, I wish I could take some of the pain away from them, <clears throat> but there's nothing you can really do to help, but um, I, we've just learned the importance of being there and, and sometimes just being there and being quiet. So um, that's where I've been the last couple of weeks, um, but I wanted to get a video out there today. So yeah, let me get to, oh, let me get to a quick announcement first, which is blocks. Somebody reached out to me recently. As you guys know, this is one of my favorite N95s. I'm on the phone, so the camera's flipping it around backwards, but it's the blocks surgical N95. Uh, quick detour, somebody asked me, what does surgical mean? Because they, they said, I read surgical masks aren't effective. Uh, when you say, when you read that surgical masks aren't effective, you're talking about these little, you know, green things with the flimsy things with the uh, ear loops. They're not really that effective. Um, but when it's put together with N95 respirator, when the word surgical is put in front of it, that just means that these are fluid resistant up to, I think, 160 millimeters of mercury. They're meant for like operating room settings where you might get splashed with blood or fluids. So it's actually an added protection when you see the word surgical in front of N95. Um, the Duckbell ACI, same thing. That's I have that right here. That's also a surgical. So these two have been really two of my favorites now for a long time. Unfortunately, it looks like blocks is all done. So somebody reached out to me just recently. Oh, we're going to have a siren come by. Let's see if that... Maybe that'll turn. <laughs> Maybe I won't have to like stop my video. How dare somebody have an emergency right now when I'm videoing? Um, yeah, anyway, uh, a viewer reached out to me and said that they had gone to the Blocks website. Blocks had given us a really nice discount code and that basically there's a method that just says something kind of pathetic, like uh, we were happy to offer this during a time that there was a need for it, but that's over now. 
<laughs> not for me, but um, they're, they're just not offering this as something that they sell to the public. So as you guys know, these two have been sort of my favorite, the, the Duffbill Blocks and the Duffbill ACI. The ACI I get from Armbrust USA website with our coupon code, which is only, it works I think three times or something like that. I've tried to push for a little bit better, but um, they often have sales on there and the Duffbill ACI is very, very inexpensive when they go on sale. It's actually much better than my coupon code the blocks has sort of been my favorite when I want something that's more sturdy like something that is going to be able to be put on and taken off multiple times without um, losing its ability to seal the duckbill ACI is a little more flimsy and it doesn't allow me to do that the trade-off is that it's nice and cool it's just lighter flimsy so it, it's just a lighter one it has a lot of protection as well I think they're both pretty much 99 plus uh, percent range for small particles in the clinical testing so they're both excellent um, unfortunately it sounds like blocks is gone so anyway I'm I guess I'm gonna stock up on the duckbill ACI <laughs> Um, all right, so let me get to the anecdote about the nasal spray, which is Enavid, and I'm trying to be a little bit uh, purposely, uh, a little bit coy here with, I, I don't want the bots to take me down here or worry about my videos. So um, head over to the Facebook group. There was a discussion about the nitric oxide spray. I've personally been using it for a while. I've handed it out to my family and a couple of friends, and they're all using it. Um, I did get an interesting anecdote. Uh, my son uh, told a colleague of his who they work together in the office, and they're, they're also good friends, and he told him about the spray and that person bought spray for his family. And recently, somebody in his family, uh, two people in his family got sick and it turned out it was RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. And some of you have been reading about this tri-pandemic right now because flu and respiratory syncytial virus are also just raging right now. And RSV does send a lot of people to the hospital. So uh, it was the aunt and, and his grandmother. His aunt and his grandmother both got sick and the aunt ended up going to the hospital, but the grandmother, um, who my son's friend is actually living with temporarily, um, he gave the grandmother some of this spray, the nitric oxide spray, and she started using it, and she was better within four days, all better. I never went to the hospital, never got that bad. So um, again, that's an anecdote, that's not a study, but all the data that I do see on this product um, is all very promising uh, in the clinical trials that were very small. They, right now there's a large clinical trial that's ongoing, but the preliminary ones were very small, but very persuasive. And I, I talked a little bit about them in my previous video and they reduced the infection rate after for post-exposure prophylaxis they reduced it by 75 percent so people who took uh, this product for post-exposure prophylaxis had a six percent infection rate whereas the people who did not had a 75 percent in, in uh, sorry six versus 26 percent infection rate so that was a 75 percent reduction and you know that's a whole lot better than the vaccines are doing right now so um this that spray has kind of become my mainstay and I'm using that pretty much every day unless there's a day that I'm just home, I'm not going anywhere, I'm only gonna be outside. Um, they used to say it was good for a month after you open it because nitric oxide starts to deteriorate pretty quickly, but this, the company, this actually spoke very highly of the company because they have every financial interest not to say this, but they recently put out a statement saying that upon further testing, they have found that it's good for at least two months after you open it. That's a huge difference. Uh, a lot of people, depending on how many times a day you're using it, you might be done with it in a month, depending on how long often, you know, how many days you're using it, how many times per day. So um, it says for just general um, preventive measures that you would use two sprays in each nostril twice a day, so morning and night. Uh, but what they don't say on there is what they did in the clinical trials where they were specifically testing for post-exposure prophylaxis or as a therapeutic for once somebody is sick. So you test positive for COVID or something or flu, uh, then they have people use it six times a day twice in each nostril, six times a day. If I were so unlucky as to have that happen, I would be setting the alarm so that I was doing it all around the clock so it was spread out evenly. That's every four hours. I'd probably do six, 10, two, six, 10, two. That's pretty easy. It would only require me to have one awake, awakening when you know I'm not normally um, awake. So 
um, anyway, I, I just continue to hear more and more good things. I have continued to look at the reviews on the product. It's sold through an Israeli pharmacy. And all the reviews, like the only things you, you see negative have to do with like shipping or something came crushed or, you know, something came late or whatever. But anybody who comments on the efficacy of the product, uh, the reviews are all stellar. So, uh, I mean, some of them you can maybe surmise more than with others. Some people just say, well, I haven't gotten sick. I don't know, maybe they wouldn't get sick anyway. But there are some really interesting stories that sort of sound like the one I just told about my son's colleague and his aunt who went to the hospital who did not use the product and his grandmother who did, who was over 90 um, and did just fine. So again, that's not a study, but it's I think it's anecdotal information and it's, it's nice to hear and it's reassuring and product's pretty benign. So I just wanted to bring that to you today and um, I hope to be getting back here. So I know people People are going to get busy for the holidays, um, but I'll hope to be back here soon. I'm going to be traveling. I'll try to do one video while I'm traveling. I'm going to meet my future in-laws, so I'm very excited about that. And yeah, so I hope you're all doing well. Let me know if any of you have started using that spray. Let me know if anybody's found any other respirators that are going scarce, because I hope these things aren't drying up now. Um, but anyway, until next time, be well. Bye-bye.